Not long after my original Lost Media video dropped, it was a big success for the channel, which I am extremely thankful to all of you for. The follow-up didn't do too bad either. Since this format seems to be working and I enjoy making these types of videos, I thought that this big project right here was the next best thing. Television was very rarely preserved in the early years. In fact, when recording live programs via telerecording was introduced in 1947, big companies such as the BBC deemed the method to be of unacceptable quality, and didn't bother to utilise it until around 1953, and even then very rarely so. As such, a large chunk of Britain's own television history is considered lost. Most of it even forever. This is British Broadcast, a history of lost television. Robin Hood, 1953. Robin Hood was a 1953 six episode British television series that starred Patrick Troughton as Robin Hood and Wensley Pythe as Friar Tuck. It was written by Max Kester and produced and directed by Joy Harrington for the BBC. The 30 minute episodes were transmitted live, which led to an incident recited by Michael Troughton, Patrick Troughton's son, in his father's biography claiming that one of the backdrops was accidentally put on upside down, which led to Troughton suggesting that they perform the show on their heads. Robin Hood was the first ever televised depiction of the character, making Troughton the first actor to play him on television. This was also one of the first performances, if not the first performance, where the BBC experimented with telerecording technology, with eight minutes from the second episode, The Abbot of St Mary's, existing as a 16mm film copy. Troughton's son Michael also mistakenly claimed in his father's biography that the full episode survived, which it didn't. Short clips of this material appeared in a 2007 documentary presented by Jonathan Ross, covering Robin Hood from its beginnings to the more recent BBC production in 2006, which co-starred Troughton's grandson Sam as much. It was also shown as an example of television production in the BBC documentary series Children's TV on Trial, the 1950s. The surviving footage was also included on the 2020 DVD and Blu-ray release of an animated reconstruction of the Doctor Who serial The Power of the Daleks, which also starred Patrick Troughton as the second Doctor. It's unknown if the full episode 2 or any of the other episodes were recorded and junked at a later date, or if this 8 minute extract is all that was ever created. If the latter is true, it should be considered lucky that such a small fragment of footage survived, although the BBC could have deemed it historically significant if it was in fact their first time telerecording, and preserved it for that reason exclusively. The rest of episode 2 and the remaining 5 episodes will most likely never be seen again. BBC's David Copperfield David Copperfield was a 1966 adaptation of the autobiographical Charles Dickens novel of the same name, the fifth television adaptation and the second BBC adaptation. It starred a young Ian McKellen as Copperfield, Tina Packer as Dora, Flora Robson as Betsy Trotwood, Gordon Gostello as Barkis, and a 12-year-old Christopher Gard as young David. It even featured Patrick Troughton in a short cameo as a pawnbroker. Packer also appeared as Anne Travers in the Doctor Who serial The Web of Fear, which is still missing episode 3 but is otherwise complete. Costello also received Doctor Who fame in the much less well received Space Pirates. Unfortunately, only episode 2 of the Space Pirates still exist, the rest of it considered missing, and given its overseas copies bad history, perhaps forever. If you're unfamiliar, the plot revolves around the complicated life of the titular David Copperfield, all the way from infancy to maturity. First released as a serial from 1849 to 1850, it was published as a book later that same year, and was partly based on Dickens' actual life, but as a mostly fictional tale of rags to riches. And then back to rags, and then back to riches. Personal tales were also very popular at the time of the book's release, and it remains a strongly successful and well-loved novel, so much so it has been adapted more times than one can count, even in 2019 as The Personal History of David Copperfield starring Dev Patel. The 13 episode BBC serial was broadcast from the 16th of January to the 10th of April 1966, achieving viewing figures of 12 million on its initial airings. Unusual for most television serials at the time, its success may have actually led to it being rebroadcast at least once or twice, as family members of mine recall seeing it as late as 1968. Due to the BBC's policy of wiping videotapes for reuse and disposing of film material via junking, the more episodes there were of something, the less likely it was to have survived, such as with Doctor Who and Zed Cars, though it's unfortunate the same has to be said for the much shorter-lived David Copperfield. According to a review by Erin Horakova on WordPress.com, only four of the 13 episodes, 3, 8, 9, and 11, are known to exist, safely preserved by the BFI as 16mm telerecorded film copies. 
All of them are available and completely free for viewing at the BFI's MediaTek. All you have to do is book in advance, completely free of charge, enter the building at the correct time, completely free of charge, and you have two and a half hours to watch whatever you want, including these episodes. It's fantastic. There apparently also exists a curious, non-screening copy of episode 3, with multiple takes and actor eye rolls when these are requested of them, and at one point director Joanne Kraft can be heard, not exactly impolitely but shortly, telling everyone to shut up. The technician who set up the screening with Erin and her friends was quite surprised that only a few scattered episodes existed, and it's unknown how exactly the four episodes even survived, or if the remaining nine episodes still exist somewhere with private collectors or unsearched archives. There appears to be no active search for the missing episodes, so if you have a copy of episodes 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 12, or 13 of BBC's David Copperfield from the 1960s starring Ian McKellen, please don't hesitate to lend them to the BFI or return them to the BBC. As for the 1956 adaptation starring Robert Hardy, it has several mentions on various websites, but no recordings of the production are known to exist. The only surviving material comes from some low-quality photographs from Radio Times listings from the time. The plot synopsis for each episode on IMDb gives an idea of what parts of the story the individual episodes adapted. It also ran for 13 episodes, and may have been very similar to the one that succeeded it a decade later. The 1974 television adaptation and all others following it can be easily accessed on VHS and DVD. Dixon of Doc Green Dixon of Doc Green is a BBC police procedural television series about the daily life at a fictional London police station, with the emphasis on petty crime successfully controlled through common sense and human understanding. It ran from 1955 to 1976, lasting an outstanding 21 years on television. The central character, George Dixon, first appeared in the film The Blue Lamp. Dixon is a mature and sympathetic police constable, played by Jack Warner in all of the 432 episodes that were produced. Dixon is the embodiment of a typical Bobby, who would be familiar with the area in which he patrolled and its residents and often lived there himself. The series contrasted with later programs such as Zed Cars, which reflected a more aggressive policing culture. It retained a faithful following throughout its run and was voted second most popular program on British TV in 1961. It came under a lot of criticism towards the end of its run for its equally unrealistic depictions of police systems being too sympathetic, as opposed to too gritty, but remained very popular up until Warner finally decided to leave the show, resulting in his character's retirement, putting a natural end to the series. Despite the popularity and landmark history on television, only 32 episodes are thought to still exist, with the other 400 long since lost to the vaults of time, and only extracts existing from 19 others. Also, a lot of the earlier episodes were broadcast live, and the BBC rarely recorded programmes prior to and during the mid-50s, meaning they most likely weren't even recorded for preservation in the first place. For the small amount of material that exists, here is a brief rundown. The last five episodes from series two exist in full. One episode and an extract from another exist from series seven. Three full episodes from series nine are thought to exist, as is one full episode from series 11. Extracts from five episodes of series 13 exist. One full episodes and extracts from eight others exist from series 14. Extracts from three episodes of series 15. One full episode of series 17. Two full episodes of series 18 four full episodes and an extract from one other from series 20, six full episodes and an extract from one other from series 21, and series 22 is complete in the BBC archive, the only series to exist as such. Additionally, an outtake sequence also exists from It's a Gift, series 21, episode 3, involving two criminals in which one of them, played by Victor Madden, finds himself unable to correctly deliver the required line, It's down at Doc Green Nick, referring to a stolen necklace. After two failed attempts, in which the line is spoken as It's down at Doc Green Dick and It's down at Dick Green Doc, Madden asks the unseen director, Veer Lorimer, Couldn't I just say It's down at the Nick? A collection of six of the seven surviving colour episodes across series 17 through 20, the omitted one being series 18, episode 7, Molenzik, was released by Acorn Media UK on DVD in July 2012. A second collection of six episodes, comprising the entire penultimate 21st series, 
was released by Acorn Media UK on DVD in July 2013. A third collection of eight episodes, comprising the entire final second series, was also released by the same company on DVD in March 2015, which also included special features such as a picture gallery, audio commentaries, extended interviews, a documentary about the show called The Final Cases, and a tribute to Jack Warner, with Nicholas Donnelly, Richard Heffer, Stephen Marsh, Gregory de Polnay, and Vivian Cozens. No real discoveries have been made of the show in recent years, leaving its fate unclear. Unless private collectors come forward or discoveries in foreign countries are made, it's unlikely any editions of Dixon of Dot Green will be discovered anytime soon. Inigo Pipkin, or Pipkins. Originally called Inigo Pipkin after its main character, this ITV puppet-performed children's show was originally broadcast from the 1st of January 1973 until the 29th of December 1981. It was originally created to be a British successor to the popular American children's show Sesame Street. The show was based around a puppet maker named Inigo Pipkin, played by George Woodbridge, who lived in his shop with his creations such as Hartley Hare, George the Tortoise, the Monkey, and Octavia the Ostrich. Pipkins was one of the first children's programs on British TV where the characters had regional accents. Pig had a Birmingham accent, Topov was a Cockney, Octavia had a French accent, Pigeon had an upper-class English accent, Mrs Penguin had a Geordie accent, Uncle Hare had a West Country English accent, Sophie the Cat had a non-regional English accent, and Mooney the Badger had a Northern Ireland accent. The show also featured Wayne Laurier, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, as Johnny, who started off as Inigo's assistant prior to Woodbridge's death, taking over as the store owner after Inigo's death was written into the show. After the death of Inigo, the show got the new shortened title of Pipkins, and adopted a new format where the characters were help people, as opposed to simply having adventures in the puppet store all day. Johnny would also be replaced by Tom, played by Jonathan Kidd, who would also be replaced by Peter Potter, played by Paddy O'Hagan. Pipkins was cancelled when ATV lost its franchise for the Midlands ITV regions, being replaced with Let's Pretend. Pipkins was, like every other studio show at the time, filmed on 625 line PAL colour videotapes. Due to damage or straight up destruction to the tapes brought on by poor storage, 197 of the show's 333 episodes are completely lost, leaving 136 episodes surviving with two left incomplete due to poor storage conditions. Nigel Plaskett, who provided the narration of the show, as well as the voices and puppet operation of Hartley Hare and the Tortoise, had video cassette recordings of 56 different episodes, making this the only format they now exist on. Some of these were even used for the limited DVD release in the UK. No black and white 16mm film copies of the show are believed to have ever existed, since the show didn't have much overseas appeal and archiving of the show clearly wasn't taken very seriously. Thanks to Plaskett's efforts, he also located an additional 21 episodes. About 53 episodes of the show are privately held in the personal ITV archives, and can't be publicly accessed anyway, so even if more missing episodes do exist, most likely on domestic tapes created by fans, they would be extremely hard to find. The search does continue, so if you have a copy of Pipkins on an old tape in your attic or basement, don't be afraid to digitise the footage and share it with the world.